Before I can talk about Valcarino Boken, we need to step back in time six months. February 21st, 1986. Nintendo launches their Famicom Disk System, and the only original game available on launch day is something called Hyrule Fantasy, Zelda no Densetsu. Now due to a quirk in my format, I'm going to talk about that game at the very end of this project. The important thing right now is that the release of The Legend of Zelda was a seismic shift in game development. Just like how Super Mario Bros. showed everyone how you make platformers, and then they all tried to make their own versions of it, everyone now had a blueprint to make action-adventure games. And they're all going to try. Namco was the first to market with their Zelda clone, Valkyrie no Boken, Toki no Kagi Densetsu, or Quest of the Valkyrie, Legend of the Key of Time, wears its Zelda influences on its sleeve. However, this is a rough game. There's a lot of, why would you do it this way? If somebody didn't explain to you how Valkyrie no Boken worked, you'd never figure it out on your own. So the game explanation this time is going to be much longer than usual. To begin at the beginning, when you press start, the game prompts you to select your astrological sign, blood type, and color. The astrological sign determines your starting stats, and your intelligence determines what spells you can use, so that affects what spells you start with. The way the early game scales, you'll have a tough time defeating a lot of enemies with just fireballs, and if you don't have healing magic, you're going to be spending a lot of money at the inn, so I recommend going for the balanced start. The blood type determines at what points you level up, in the end, it all evens out, so I'd recommend just sticking with an average one here as well. The color only affects appearance, but why would you select anything other than hot pink? With that, you're dropped down into the world and told to go off and have fun. As you might have guessed from the title, your goal is to recover the key of time from a villain who has stolen it. But you don't really have any direction for how to do that. As you walk around, occasionally enemies will appear around you. What enemies appear are consistent with what area you're in. Starting out, you'll have cavemen and bats appear around you. But if you walk off to the north here, you'll be attacked by much stronger cavemen who throw fireballs. So you can tell that you're kind of gated there until you level up a bit. Enemies typically drop money bags, but sometimes they'll drop items instead. You can carry up to eight items at once, including your sword. To use them, press start or select to pause the game, and then you can hit left or right to select which item you want in the lower left. Press B on it to use that item. Some items are single use, some of them are equipment, and some of them can only be used in special circumstances. Also on that menu, you can press up and down to select your spell. The fireball costs 5 magic points, and the healing spell costs 20. So now we're on our adventure. The first real goal is getting to some safety. March to the right and eventually you'll come to this inn. You can climb into the bed to recover, but it is kind of expensive. If you need to recover any spell points, it always costs 20 gold. Same thing if you need to recover from poison. While recovering health is one gold per hit point, and you can run out of money while healing. Even if you don't sleep in the bed, it's still worth it to pop your head in the door, because it gives you the password, and that will automatically populate when you continue. So whenever you continue, it's from the last password that you've seen. The other important thing about the inn is that you have to sleep in the bed to level up. That number at the top is how many experience points you need to reach the next level. And if you need to level, then obviously the next task is to grind. If you go a little bit north from the inn, some red cavemen will spawn there, and I found those to be a pretty good way to work your way up to level 3. Once you feel like you're strong enough to get out of that little area, your next task is to get off this island. The way you have to do that is to locate a magic boat. It's hidden at this chest that you can find almost right at the beginning, 
but the path to it leads through some dangerous territory, and you also need a key to open the chest. Keys are obtained by killing these big monsters, and they can be used up to four times before they break. Congratulations, you've got the boat! One problem. The boat can only leave through harbors. There's only a very small number of those, too. What you're probably going to wind up doing is fighting your way to the harbor to get off this island, try to feel your way around a little bit, and then either retreat back to the inn or die and have to continue. As a small tip, all of this stuff comes back when you continue, so you could pick up another magic boat. You'll want to do that. Of course, if you have eight items, it's not like you can drop any. You'd have to use them up or locate a shop, and locating a shop is your next goal. One more boat tip as you're exploring looking for this shop. You can still attack while you're on the boat, you just don't see the animation. When you have the boat, you can also find this. Putting the helmet on reduces damage until you die. I read that it goes away if you take enough damage, but I never saw that effect. It only went away when I continued. Congratulations, you found the other big harbor, and then explored the continent enough to locate the inn and store. Just so you know, even though you get a password at this inn, you still go all the way back to the beginning when you continue. In the store, you can approach the scale and hit start to sell off items. And I definitely recommend that you do that for just about everything that you don't immediately need. There's always a magic boat right at the start, and a key along with the monster, and those are two of the most expensive items you'll find, so go ahead and sell them. Also, items with one use left on them are still worth just as much to this guy as items with full uses left. Now that we're at the shop, let's walk through these items. The potion in the Dewar flask is a health potion. The potion in the Erlenmeyer flask is an antidote. Some monsters can poison you, but so can bumping into mushrooms or cacti. The axe is a vital item. You can use it to attack enemies, but it's not very strong. What it's good for is chopping down trees and smashing through hills. You have to have a high physical ability to get through hills, though. Each one gives you 40 swings of the axe through an obstacle, and you'll need them to cut open paths to the next areas. The sword is an upgrade to your short sword, so once you buy it, you can sell your basic one. The lamp lights things up, of course. That includes the night, though there's no practical difference between the night and day, even though it cycles. The time is just used for one puzzle in the game. Finally, the cloak protects you from environmental hazards, like hot sand or frozen tundra. So now that you're re-outfitted, you can start chopping through trees, and you'll find this henge. Stand in the square in front of it, and then press A. That will teleport you to another hinge, and which one you go to depends on what direction you're facing. If you can get to one of these wells, they're dungeons, and you'll definitely want to have a lamp when you explore them. So there's a lot going on in Valkyrie no and overall as a game it's not bad, but it does have some critical flaws. First, those save points are really far apart. When you're exploring, you're going to have a very difficult time locating the next one. If you continue immediately after a game over, then your inventory is preserved. But if you power off and restart using the password, you start out with nothing. For as long of password as they have, you'd think they'd be able to store your inventory. There's only one Valkyrie game on the Famicom, so we won't be seeing her again. There is a PC Engine game that's a port of the arcade game that inspired this, and a Super Famicom spin-off starring the shopkeeper. This game did get a remake on the PlayStation as part of the Namco anthology. It adds some more guidance for the player so you're not just wandering around wondering what to do. As for Valkyrie no Boken Toki no Kagi Densetsu, it's got a pretty steep barrier to entry where you just don't know what anything does or what you're supposed to be doing. But once you've crossed that hurdle, it's a pretty neat little game. I can tell you I stored my password so I'll be able to pick this one up again later, right where I left off.